The most valuable things in this world are time and health. Unfortunately, money can't buy them. But what if I promise you that you can control them and add some quality years to your life after watching this video? Stick around and let's start! So in order to know how to live longer and healthier, we must know the number one cause of death. Professor Stephen Blair, an American scientist at the University of South Carolina, made a study called All Cause Mortality. He wanted to find out what is our number one killer. He took a huge group, more than 10,000 participants, men and women, at different ages. He examined their lifestyle, sport and smoking habits, blood pressure, cholesterol and sugar levels, current and family history of diseases such as heart disease, cancer, etc., and monitored the changes every year. The study followed them for 30 years until they actually started dying. This led him to discover an important fact. Usually, it's not some big event that takes away our health, like an accident or a serious illness. Rather, we are the ones who take away our health. Since the number one cause of death is not heart attack, obesity, smoking, or cancer, or anything else you can imagine, the study found that attributable risk estimates for all-cause mortality indicated that physical inactivity was the main cause of death in both men and women, and that's because it affects all the other aspects. Higher levels of physical fitness, on the other hand, appear to delay all-cause mortality. Important point, the physical fitness of the participants wasn't based only on the questionnaire, but it was objectively measured by a maximal exercise test, same as the sugar and cholesterol levels, history of diseases, and so on, so there can be no doubt. A sedentary lifestyle is the biggest problem of the 21st century. According to data, approximately 30% of U.S. adults are quite sedentary, and the prevalence of low fitness levels is correspondingly high. According to the recommendations of the U.S. Department of Health and the American Heart Association, one should perform moderate physical activity for at least half an hour on most days of the week. The risk of mortality can be reduced by 20 to 30 percent through this level of activity because it reduces rates of cardiovascular disease and cancer deaths in the more fit men and women. Another study showed that, according to analyses of data in the U.S., reducing daily sitting time to less than three hours may extend life expectancy by about two years. Obese men who were moderately or highly fit had less than half the risk of dying than the normal weight men who were unfit, and unfit women might reduce their risk of dying by almost 50% if they become fit. And this is actually good news, since we know now that there is something we can do to improve our life. Besides all the healthy benefits sport can bring to your life, it also increases cognitive ability, makes you more energetic during the day, and reduces depression. Now, I know that everyone is busy these days, and you don't really have time, but sport doesn't have to be a big deal, and you don't even have to go to the gym. A brisk walk of 30 to 60 minutes each day is enough to produce the fitness standard, or any moderate sports activity that you like for half an hour a day, five days a week, like swimming, skiing, dancing, jogging, etc. You can consider changing small habits, like climbing the stairs instead of using the elevator. You can also use a pedometer so you'll have an incentive to move more. You need to have around 10,000 steps a day. Or simply adopt a dog. Believe me, he will know how to make you go for a walk. So what are you waiting for? Hit the like button and go out for a walk.